Hello students, my name is Prerna and today from your EVS book Enviro, we are going to be reading chapter number 3. So what is this chapter about? Let us see, this chapter has a very interesting title. So here we go. As I told you, this is chapter number 3 and the title of the chapter is Sensing Power. So how do you sense power? What is it that makes you feel or sense something? It is your sense organs. So what are these sense organs? Our sense organs allow us to feel the world around us. We have five sense organs. How many sense organs we have? Five. What are these? Ears, nose, eyes, tongue and our skin. So these are the five sense organs. Our ears, our nose, our eyes, our skin and our tongue. They help us to hear, smell, see, taste and feel things around us. We have a brain inside our skull of the head. So this is like, this is what your brain looks like. It is divided into several parts. So uh, when you go in higher classes, that is when you will study about the different parts of the brain as well. So what is the main function of this brain? So if I'm to put it into simple words, this brain is like a control unit. It's like a remote control. This brain of yours, it controls all the other organs of our body. So like I told you, it's the control unit. It is the main place from where all the other parts of our body are able to function properly. It coordinates most of the body activities like thinking, speaking, writing, memorizing and receiving messages from sense organs. The brain is connected to all parts of the body through nerves. So how is that what we smell is registered here. How? Because these are connected through nerves. Nerves are fine fibers which communicate messages to and from the brain. So let's uh, take an example that uh, you see something, sometimes you know we are watching uh, something which is uh, which makes us laugh, right? We are watching something on television which makes us laugh. So what happens? We see something, we are sensing something through our eyes and immediately a message is sent to our brain that what we are watching is very funny. So what happens? There is a reaction that comes. What is that reaction? Smile. We start laughing. Ha 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 ha. Right? So uh, this procedure takes place in fraction of seconds. It takes very quick. This, this entire process is very quick. Another example, you touch something hot and you immediately remove your hand. How? Because the moment you have touched something, so your skin, it's a sense organ. What has happened? It has touched something which is harmful or which is affecting you. Immediately, a message goes to the brain that you're supposed to remove your hand. So this is how a brain and all our sense organs work. This is how all of them coordinate with each other. It's a team work, right? So like you're playing with your friends, so you tell your friend to do something, then uh, you know he or she again tells you to do something. So you know the manner in which you play with your friends in a coordinated uh, manner. This is how your brain and other sense organs are also connected with each other. So the first sense organ that we are talking about is 
Nose, nose is the first sense organ that we are talking about. It says, so what is the main function? We can differentiate pleasant and unpleasant smell through our nose. So like we put a perfume, we go to a party and our friends say, wow, you're smelling so nice. Or sometimes, uh, you know, we are going somewhere and, and there's a very unpleasant smell. Like, oh my God, what is this? So which sense organ helps you differentiate that this is a pleasant smell? This is an unpleasant smell. It's your nose. It says when we smell some tiny particles, uh, so when we smell some tiny particles enter our nose through nostrils. What are your nostrils? So these two openings of your nose are called as nostrils. So some particles, they enter our nose through nostrils. These tiny particles are called smell particles. Once they enter the nostrils, the air moves into, spa into a space at the top of the nose. The space is covered with uh, special smelling cells. The smell sticks to th these cells and sends signals to the brain. The brain identifies the source of the smell, smell and tells us what it is. So what exactly is happening? That some smell particles, they enter our no nose through nostrils. Then these particles move up. They get stuck inside our nose, right? And then these, uh, there, is, there is a message that is sent to our brain that tells us that this is a pleasant smell or this is an unpleasant smell or this is a stingy smell or what kind of smell it is and then we react accordingly. So now our nose is actually capable of uh, smelling seven different types of smell. Let's see what exactly are these. So here we go. So here you can see that there are seven different types of smells that is being talked about. The first is camphor. What is camphor? Camphor is, uh, they are like small uh, pieces uh, made up of uh, certain particles and they are generally square in, uh, square in their appearance. So if you can see, I'm holding some camphor in my hand. This camphor is also, uh, you know, sometimes used for some uh, religious activity in our house. All right. And this, this is, uh, camphor is always white in color. So you can see that this is what camphor looks like. Then the next thing is musk. What is musk? So musk is, uh, it is a material which is used uh, for making perfumes. What is the next um, smell that we are easily able to sense? Flour. The next is mint. So uh, like you generally have chewing gum with a mint flavor. What do you call mint in Hindi? Pudina, right? It's a green color plant. And the moment you will see someone at your home, uh, you know, probably plucking the leaves of it to make some chutney. So you will see that the entire house is filled with a very pleasant smell. The next is putrid. Putrid is a smell of a decaying item like rotten eggs. You know, something which is, uh, you know, which has a very stingy smell. Something, uh, you know, which has a fungus on it, which is actually of no use now. You will see that the moment you see a rot, uh, you uh, there's a rotten egg or there's a decaying material around you, immediately your nose will sense it and the brain will se send a signal that this is a very pungent smell. Next is acid, kind of acidic smell. Then you have ether. Ether is uh, it's it's a kind of a colorless liquid, and it is very volatile. That is, uh, you know, it is it. it catches fire also very easily so all these seven smells is something which our nose will immediately react to so the first that we have spoken about is camphor then you have flour then you have mint you have ether you have musk 
and asterisk so these are the smell uh, that you will see uh, your nose immediately reacts to then it says some people are very sensitive or allergic to certain smell i'll give you a little example uh, or i'll tell you about myself uh, if someone opens a box of black pepper in front of me i will not be able to speak a word in fact i will start sneezing immediately so uh, sometimes what happens is that sometimes that uh, you will see a person has put a perfume or a deodorant and you suddenly start uh, sneezing that means your nose is not uh, has not is not really accepted that smell immediately so uh, i would not say i'm allergic but i'm sensitive to black pepper and then some, someone is allergic to means that smell will Rea will show some reaction which will harm the person. They may not like the smell of certain kinds of food. Uh, for example, some people do not like the smell of egg. They they feel like vomiting the moment someone is uh, you know making an omelette. So you'll see a lot of people saying, "Oh my God, the smell of egg." We should respect the feelings of those who do not like strong smells. so though some people may be allergic to them most people find the smell of room fresheners perfumes deodorants and after shave lotions very pleasant good smell has the ability to over uh, to cover other foul smells you will uh, see that sometimes maybe uh, uh, your house is doesn't have a foul smell but you will see particularly around diwali and uh, festive season maybe or uh, on your birthday you will see your parents or your family members they would be uh, spraying uh, room fresheners why because it's it gives a very pleasant smell that is why people use underarm deodorants to cover bad smells of their sweat all right so the first smell a uh, sense organ that we have studied about is our nose which can differentiate between pleasant smell and unpleasant smell the second sense organ is touch so what is it it's our skin which tells us that whatever we have touched is it good enough for us or is it going to harm us like the example i gave you the moment you touch something hot you immediately remove your hand touch is the name of the sensation transmitted by our nerves and a uh, nerve endings from every part of the body they are located just under the skin so the nerves uh, uh, you will see red or green colored nerves you will see they are these are the nerves which are located under your skin when something touches us even lightly it presses one or more nerves under our skin they carry the message to our brain our brain tells us what object we touched feels like there are different nerves to feel hot or cold objects pain pressure softness hardness etc so it's not like that all the nerves will tell you this is hot this is cold this is painful or this is a uh, very soft and uh, you know for different sensations hot cold painful softness you have different nerves in your body if someone pinches your arm the nerve tells our brain that hurts so like we sometimes do no with our friends we pinch them or we hold their cheek like that oh god it's hurting right so it's the nerves in your body or uh, you know probably when you're pinching someone the, the nerves will tell that what kind of uh, touch was that or what kind of uh, reaction was to be given and how does this happen like in the case of nose there were particles which enter our nose and then the message is sent to the brain and then brain uh, gives the feedback so similarly these nerves under our skin they also send a message to our brain and the brain responds and then we react different 
parts of our body have different sensing parts. Our fingertips and our tongue are more sensitive than our back. How do we know that? If, uh, let's say, uh, you've touched something which is very hot, your fingertip, you will see that it is very painful for a certain period of time. Okay, uh, so they have given an activity. So ask your friend to touch your back with two pens and uh, with caps on them held close together. I mean, you have to be very careful <laughs> while doing this. You will feel that your friend is using only one pen. However, your fingertips can feel the sensation of both the pens easily. All right, this is because the fingertips is the more sensitive part. Being careful, now, this is very important. Our senses also help us to remain safe. Avoid touching hot utensils. Stay away from sharp needle-like objects, compass, or a needle, or a, a nail. Stay away from these objects. Do not touch strange objects or plants. You know what? Sometimes there are certain plants which can give you allergy, skin allergy. And uh, because of which you might have to suffer throughout life. So you should not touch every plant. Then a very important topic, good touch and bad touch. What does this mean? There are different feelings which we get touched by others. It depends upon how and in what sense it has been sensed by us. When someone pats our back, or we get a hug, we feel comfortable and happy. This is a good touch. But when some, sometimes the person might be giving us a hug or might be patting our back, but we do not feel good about it. We feel very uncomfortable. We do not like the fact that this person has touched me. That means it is a bad touch. So you need to remember that you should never ever allow any stranger to touch you. Always tell the person to maintain distance and talk to you. Sensing by differently abled people, a very interesting topic. So sometimes we come across people who are blind or maybe who cannot hear or maybe who cannot talk. So how is that these people are able to sense? Sometimes when one or the other of our senses does not work too well or does not work at all, the other sense becomes sharper and more developed. Very often you would have seen, oh, this person is blind, but this person is very sharp in a particular skill. How is that? This person cannot see, but the person is blind. Uh, you know, uh, is, is uh, very sharp, still very sharp. For instance, someone who cannot see will usually have a strong uh, sense of smell or touch. And this happens. Similarly, if a person, if a deaf person cannot hear, he is more sensitive in understanding the actions or lip movement of other people to understand them. You know, people who cannot hear, uh, for them, there are special trainings that are conducted that through lip movement they can understand what the other person is saying. So they do not have ears. I mean, sorry, they, their ears do not uh, function properly. But imagine they are able to read someone's lips. This is why people who do not have the use of one or more of their senses are called differently able. These people use special script known as the braille script. So to explain it to you in very simple words, this braille script was developed for people who are blind. This braille script is in a form, it's, it's in a dotted form. And what happens that uh, the dots signify or denote different alphabets. So these people who are visually uh, differently abled, 
uh, visually uh, differently able, these people put or move their finger on those dots and they are able to understand the alphabet. So you can see this braille script which is uh, drawn here, right? So it is showing different, the formation of different alphabets here. Alright, and very important, very, uh, uh, th this is something that you really need to keep in mind to be a good human being. What is it? We must be sensitive to the needs and feelings of differently able people. Never ever make fun of differently able people. As with everyone else, people with special needs do well in life if they are given a chance and a little help. So let us do whatever we can to help them. So first of all, feel blessed that all your sense organs are functioning properly. And if you come across someone who needs help, always be ready to help them. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed reading. Uh, this particular chapter. Thank you so much.